Welcome to the video on how to use the cluster analysis template for marketing. You'll need to get to this particular page and the links at the bottom of the video to make it easy. Once you're there, you should see this website. You click on free download and it brings up, click this link for the free download. So you click on that. Then it asks you to open in Excel, which we will. And it takes a few moments because it's a, a relatively large file. So while that's coming down, about 10 seconds or so, you can see there's extra instructions here. All there's lots and lots of information throughout the website that will help you run um, uh, cluster analysis. Plus, it gives you various examples as well. So everything you need to know for cluster analysis for marketing is here for you. Okay. As you can see, that took about 10, 15 seconds to to open because there's a lot of calculations in there. First thing you'll see is uh, from an internet, so just enable editing and this is your first screen and you can see there's various tabs down the bottom but we start here again a few more instructions, a link back to the site if you need one. So basically you need to enter data for two variables, one, two, you can type anywhere over the white cells and data for 10 respondents. Okay, so I'll just um, call this one short for customer satisfaction. Sorry. And um, maybe this one's how often they buy. So I'll just call that frequency. So you most likely will have data you can use from a database or from a market research survey. So you just type anywhere in the white cells you don't need to delete these, and then you just put in some your data. Okay, so I'll just quickly quickly do that. Okay, now I've got some data in here. As you can see, I'm using some sort of scale from maybe one to nine. That's not as important, but you should try to, to scale your data um, and just have a look at the website for suggestions of that. Frequency refers to how often the consumer buys. So these are measures related to the consumer and we're trying to create market segments so we need consumer information. Once you've done that, the cluster analysis has run in the background. That's why the file took a while to download. All the calculations are, are there. So you simply click on whatever you want to see, output clusters, etc. We'll just work through these quickly. This website and the template get automatically gives you um, outputs for multiple segmentation structures. So here's one for two, three, four, and five. That happens automatically. Okay, in some statistical packages you have to designate how many segments, but I'm putting them on the one page so they're easy to see. Um, the tables are identical except we go into more and more segments. So let's just randomly pick uh, four clusters it, it shows you, say we'll start here, there is out of the 10 people I have put in there, three got put into segment one, segment two, and two put, in, put into segment three and four. That's just a percentage. Here's your uh, error scores, which you should check out on the website how to read them, but the lower the better. And then for each segment, what's the uh, average or the mean so segment one typically has high satisfaction at seven and quite high frequency, okay? And this down here is the average of the overall market. So whatever approach you have, again, read through the website about how you do this, but simply go through and compare the various outputs and have a think about which segmentation approach makes the most sense. Okay, then, it also provides segmentation maps. You can rename these by just typing into that side there. I'll just do that and it automatically changes the heading. I'll just change that back. Or you could um, name, rename the segments. So, uh, so, so say loyal. And you can see it just automatically jumps in there. If you have nothing in there, it just reverts back to segment one. So you've got a little bit of control over the mapping there. And basically, you've got the map for two segments, three, 
4 and 5. What this does is take the first two variables. In this case, we've only got two variables. Uh, if you had more, they wouldn't map. It's just the first two. And you can see where they lie out. So you can use this as a sense of, oh, gee, that one makes a lot of sense. Or, gee, that doesn't make any sense. So you go through as a visual glance to say, hey, what, what seems to make sense? Then we've got uh, this, what's called the central means charts. A whole bunch of those sitting here. This maps out every single respondent. We only had 10, but that's where they fit. And that circle is the average. Then we go through the same thing for two segments. And you can see we've got the, the red down here, the blue up there. Then we've got three segments. Four and five again, depending on your what you want to do. Let's have a look at the, the four segment approach. Because we've only got ten people in here, it, it uh, is, is fairly simple. Down here, we've got two people classified as segment four, and that's the center of segment four. These are another segment, and that's their center. Another segment, their center. Another segment. Um, obviously, if we had more data, it'd look a little bit more complicated. But basically, that's all it's doing. It just starts with everybody. If you want two segments, that's where they, that's the individuals, and that's the average. And those are average scores coming back from over here when we had these average scores here, they being mapped over here, so you can see the, visually the difference. Okay, the next thing we have is the the uh, sum of squared error. Obviously, we're looking to minimize this. So, obviously, as we add more and more segments, uh, we reduce that. If we had 10 segments, there's only 10 people, so that would actually come down to, to zero. But this template uh, is designed as a, a teaching tool, and it only has up to five segments. Uh, so, we use it as a guide. Again, check out the website, but the lower, the better on average. And then we use this one as well. These numbers add up to the sum of those, so that 26% plus another 20% as to the 46% there. And it's just showing how much error there is per segment. So in this one here, even though it's an improvement, uh, the second segment is, is not very well defined. Once we get to here, we find the error has decreased. So again, we want this fairly even and, and, and relatively low. And if there's nothing there, that means there's absolutely uh, no error showing, which means that uh, all people in that work in that segment are identical. So that's how you use the template. Like I said, I would browse through. There's lots and lots of information I've put on the website, um, starting from you know marketing information, interpreting all those things I just went through. Obviously, you're going to create market segments. If you're really interested in some more of the statistical side, there it is there, and there's some examples, etc. Okay, so all the best.